So the purpose of the 23.10.1 release is to resolve some issues that were found in the 23.10 release, uh, primarily by users. Uh, and uh, note that uh, I've had a few questions about why, you know, normally for releases, we pull from development, but for why for point releases, we pull from the release. Uh, and that's primarily because the 23.10.1 is, or any point release is really kind of an addendum to the previous release that it's based off of. So we don't want to include everything that's inside of development and add risk as development it has a lot of turmoil. People are submitting code into it constantly. Uh, instead, we control that risk by pulling directly from the previous release uh, into the point release branch, uh, do all the hardening inside of there, and note that point releases have a much smaller development time and less QA time. So it's important that uh, we make sure we're in a controlled environment. You know, and then we'll push that back up to the, the mainline uh, release once, uh, you know, tomorrow, basically, once once we're finished. Uh, so with that, uh, being that the 23.10.1's primary goal is to harden uh, or continue hardening basically what was in 23.10, uh, we are basically uh, have been hardening the prefab overrides, which was the main topic for the 23.10, and they will be turned on by default. And note there will be instructions on how to turn them off if for some reason you're not happy with uh, prefab overrides. Uh, but note that make sure you aren't using prefab overrides before you disable them because that will cause issues. Uh, we are also have made many material canvas improvements uh, and fixes, mostly some optimizations as well as fixing crash bugs there. Uh, we are continuing to improve the editor load times. Uh, this is primarily, some of them were caused by the asset browser, uh, which is a new feature for O3DE. Uh, and so uh, we made some optimizations there. And note that this is not an endpoint for our optimizations. We still have a lot of work to do here. Uh, to improve being able to get into the editor. So this is just one step uh, into you know, the process of uh, being able to get into the editor faster. Uh, also, uh, we have easier uh, exporting of projects and this is what TJ is gonna talk about. The, uh, you know, one of the end goals here is uh, right now it's still command line oriented. We are working on fixing that for the uh, potential February release uh, and adding UI. But for now, we're just trying to make it so you can double click on a uh, command and it will just export your project. Um, but again, TJ will talk more in depth about that. Uh, we also added some fixes for Visual Studio 2022 due to updates because uh, Microsoft tends to do an update every month for Visual Studio. And sometimes those updates conflict with our with building O3DE. And so we've made some fixes so that the most recent updates uh, will work with O3DE. Uh, also, several uh, crash fixes for the terrain feature. Uh, there are uh, a whole slew of robotics templates and improvements uh, have gone in um, and, you know, for anyone who's interested in the robotics side. And then uh, we added support for Android Gradle 8.1. This is a stepping stone towards full Android support. Uh, we uh, are working on this currently, uh, we being, you know, all of O3DE, uh, but um, we don't expect to have full support until probably the February release uh, or, you know, in development beforehand, if you, you know, are fine dealing with, you know, the potential instability of development. Uh, but this is just a stepping uh, stone for Gradle, uh, particularly for users who are currently experimenting around with Android and iOS. This, uh, for Android in particular, this is important. 